Hi, Afikas Moons. Thank you so much for being here. I am Divine from Care at 144. Very happy, grateful, and blessed to bring you this reading. This reading is designed for those who have their moon sign in the zodiac sign of Afikas, unlimited to anyone, and yes, zodiac sign of Afikas, or anyone, um, unlimited to anyone who should find this message or should this message find you. For your reading, I will be doing a three card spread, love, money, and you, and then clarifying those three cards. I will also do an overall card at the end using the Monology Oracle cards. I've already pre-shuffled the deck. I am going to shuffle just a few more times here and uh, split the deck and we'll begin your reading. All right, so we'll see in the Seven of Cups. I do feel that is speaking to some clarity on the situation that's coming through. So that there can be progress, uh, excuse me, progression and moving forward in a more positive manner on a more lighter and energetic note. Oh, and look there. We have the Ten of Cups and the Two of Cups. Super pretty. Um, I'm just getting that being happiness in the home. If you do have any kind of that coming from the uh, Seven of Cups, going to that Ten of Cups, there's a Three of Cups. So I do feel that Three of Cups is the message and staying in a high vibration. And maintaining that um, today is a significant day um, in the Hindu culture and it's um, a great opportunity to remove a lot of negativity that may be surrounding one especially um, do this on a daily basis but this being a very significant day to do that and to really pay attention to that and to keep your vibration high so I feel that that's a part of that message coming through with the seven of cups and then the Ten of Cups coming through, connected to the Two of Cups. And that Two of Cups being about, um, I'm getting a great love, but this also being about uh, camaraderie and working together to get things done. Where it could be about romance, but with the um, energy that I'm feeling, I'm just getting you working well together with others in partnership to get to a desired result that brings greater success. And we'll put this here. So for your first card, for your love card, we have the Knight of Wands. So fire energy coming from you here. This is also Sagittarius, Leo, Aries energy. And this being an energy of defending the element it stands for. So really defending the fire from within you and what it is that you put in having to do with your creative endeavors. Also what it is that you may do um, when it comes to how it is that you bring in love with this being in the love section here. But there being, um, with that two of cups, there being a, a high energy of fire and desire connected to this as well. And really putting some intensity into that uh, particular segment of your life in the love department. Interesting energy there. I'm not getting anything negative with this. It's being um, completely positive. And this could uh, possibly be to, um, you know, what you're putting in, you're also seeing being returned to you and that being a part of that two of cups. That leads to that overall ten of cups of emotional fulfillment, being uh, there being great happiness and joy, and a lot of fire that's put into this. The moon has been in Aries, and it's getting ready to shift. If it hasn't already, I haven't checked lately, but um, when I did check a few hours ago, it was still in Aries. The full moon is set to be in Taurus, which is upcoming here very, very, very soon. For your money. We have beautiful, the Wheel of Fortune. 
So I'm getting the energy of both the uh, positive and the negative where there has been some misfortune and that being the reason for the fire when it comes to this love energy where I feel you're putting a lot of this into yourself first in order to see a great product um, as an end result on the outer. And so um, with that misfortune and that coming about, it's like, um, you know, things can only go up from here where things are definitely turning in your favor here. It's just not meant for you to be. I feel like you're a very prosperous energy. You're a very prosperous one. And um, with any kind of situation where there may be a sense of misfortune, it's designed. And I'm getting Tower Moment connected to this here too. Um, I'm getting there being a connectiveness. And that's also being about uh, that Seven of Cups there too. Um, the Tower energy is the card of 16. And that adding up to a seven, but also um, breaking down to a five, being transformative energy. So this all being for a special design and purpose to help you to come into greater strength. I'm hearing Xena, warrior princess. <laughs> so you um, being up for the challenge here too. I feel that, you know, nothing can really get you down. It may be some kind of... Um, offsetting type situation but you don't have time for the um for the nonsense so you're just putting that fire into yourself and what it is that is already a part of you with that being in the love energy there and with your money um i'm just hearing ching 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 here too as well like i automatically thought of the game wheel of fortune so some of you actually may be Wanting to be a participant, you may enjoy watching Wheel of Fortune, that being a favorite show. But um, lots of money connected to this here, where you do have um, things most definitely turning in your favor. There being great change. With that tower moment there too that I was getting, that being a card of 16 right before the tower is the devil card. That being a card of 15. Coming together to create a six, but it's also a Capricorn card. Here we have the energy of 10. 10th house energy is Capricorn. So that's where I'm getting that misfortune, dealing with that devil energy, and then moving along the manifestation cycle from the devil to the tower, and then foundation coming down. There being more clarity where there may have been some confusion connected to something having to do with the foundation that's been building up on something that was not stable. So the clarity coming through with the misfortune that's taking place where there is now an up and up energy with the connectedness to finances and money and abundance. For your you card. Oh, looky here. All right. So this is confirming um, what I was getting here. So there being some things um, that you have from within yourself um, that have been a, a part of some illusion of some sort connected to that seven of cups, the clarity all coming through with a misfortunate situation here that I'm getting from that wheel of fortune in your money sector here. So realizing that there may be some indulgences, um, some kind of escapes, some vices, things that are being used to help one to escape is what I'm getting here connected to this devil card. And this is going back to the Capricorn energy connected to this wheel and that 10 there. That being the card of 15 coming together to create the six. Well, I do feel that this is about an overall lesson of having unconditional love for yourself and really nurturing and putting that good warm energy back into you where you may have been doing a lot of giving and... Um, how do I want to say it? In the midst of all that giving, there being the creation of that Seven of Cups energy and there being some fogginess, some cloudiness, but things continuing to go. And I feel that's where that tower that follows this card comes in to break this down as supportive energy from spirit to say, hey, this is what's happening. This is what um, we have now. This is what you can do. And this is what we're going to do moving forward. Let's get to your clarifiers. We'll clarify the Knight of Wands. Let's 
see if we can get one card, please. Clarify the Knight of Wands. Temperance. So we have two fire energies here. Temperance being a card of Sagittarius. But I feel that this is how you're alchemizing and maintaining. Also being the great star that you are. This was a card of 14. So we have 14, 15, the energy of 16, and the antidote of you being the star as card number 17, which we do not have here. But that energy, um, I'm definitely feeling with this temperance card here in more ways than one with the feet energy and being on the ground, dealing with the energy of the vessels, which is also a part of the star card too. And they're just being great alchemization. And you would look at this card and say, well, there's nothing in between these cups. There is if you want it to be. And I feel that's a part of your magic and how you're able to be in this energy of having patience. And that being a part of the misfortune there too, with the vessels not appearing to have any kind of things coming out of them or having things in them. And that being a part of the misfortune feeling. And I feel it's about you strengthening yourself in the mindset here too. When it comes to the fire from within, knowing the truth for yourself, I'm also seeing like a little squiggly that reminds me of the snake and that being one of your symbols. But um, with the gaining of higher perspective, that being connected to the hangman there too, and the, the energy of gaining overall abundance, being connected to divine, you are what you create. And you have the great magician power from within you. This already being a uh, set energy along a manifestation cycle that starts with the energy of the fool and then the one representing the magician next. So this um, calling for you to definitely continue to have the patience and to continue to alchemize and do what it is that you can with what it is that you have and visualizing. I'm getting the power of visualizing being very important here too putting the fire into that. And I feel that that's just confirming here what it is that you're doing as this Knight of Wands, defending that energy of the fire and that fire also representing this temperance angel here. This is uh, also five energy that was coming through um, a little earlier with the uh, tower card connection and that uh, 16, that six and that one coming down to a five. This being a five here, five also being here, fine energy as well. We'll put this here. All right, let's clarify the Wheel of Fortune. Divine timing here too as well. Knowing that everything is okay because it always is all as well. Clarify the Wheel of Fortune. here we'll take it yeah because you're the empress whether you're male or female very strong in your power you have all the tools that you need this being after the um magician as the magician is the one the high priestess the two and we build up here this being a part of that manifesting as the empress this being accomplished and established i do feel too with this coming out, this is also supportive energy where you may be receiving assistance here from a mother energy here who is very stable, um, who is able to help and um, support, but also able to create as well. I'm seeing mother and daughter energy here. So what I'm also getting to with the devil card being here and then that knight of wands being in the love section is possibly being very much focused on a lot of love and um, wanting to manifest that and bring that in. And then there being a focus loss when it comes to the practicality energy that is supplying this water here, where in the midst of things, there's that seven of cups again with illusion. And that being missed because there's been uh, more focus on <laughs> uh, sexual energies and connections and relationships 
I feel this is a message about, you know, putting more focus on to you and really truly loving yourself and putting that fire energy into oneself to help bring that fruition of what is between these vessels back into play for you. You being assisted by an empress energy is what I'm getting here, who's helping you to turn this wheel overall. That has been um, in a reversal energy with the misfortune energy that came through. But um, definitely getting a mother energy that is here to help and support. Very confident, very beautiful energy here. I'm getting a loving energy, possibly mistaken for not being so loving, but they do have that capability with the Empress energy being here. And this makes up um, all four queens. So also one who has gone through everything, all kinds of cycles and all kinds of ways to attain mastery here. And so I'm just getting some lessons here with the daughter and mother energy and then the knight of wands here, like focusing on the boys and that <laughs> wonderful nurturing energy from mother just coming through to support the daughter energy here. And this doesn't have to be mother daughter, but I am getting that. This could also be about that mother energy from within you supporting self to help that will turn, but take what resonates. All right, let's clarify the devil. Clarify the devil card. All right, and we have the lovers. And this wasn't a reverse energy. Um, with that, I'm just hearing, you know, something that may have been a choice is most likely going to be a no, especially if it's dealing with some kind of toxicity and then that energy that was being picked up with the Knight of Wands there. Where I'm almost hearing like the mother energy, like, um, I'm not even hearing the mother energy, but just leading by example to help the daughter energy to really know their true worth and their value. Even if they really may not get along, there is still that connection of mother and child here. And so that love is going to be there regardless. So without things being very much said here or spoken, I feel that, um, it's about that internal knowing and that being the reason I feel that that high priestess energy didn't really come through, but it did come through where there was speak of the magician and now we have the empress energy in between the magician and the empress is the high priestess. So learning lessons when it comes to really listening to one's intuition, but also seeing the reality of things and that you know, getting away from that seven of cups and that illusion energy so that one can find happiness and knowing that that happiness comes from within and that two of cups related to that 10 of cups, which comes together as a 12 of cups, which is pretty awesome. And I feel that speaks to the uniqueness and the rarity in itself, which is also connected to you as a fucus energy. So this is lovely. I love it. Um, but yeah, most of short, I feel it's about a choice that's been made. Um, you know, and it's totally an unconscious thing. And I feel it's, you know, manifested subconsciously to be able to heal, to deal and to heal from whatever has been kind of ruminating in the lower chakra region. So that there can be that clarity moving away from any kind of illusion in that seven of cup and achieving that happiness with that Ten of Cups. The Lovers is Gemini energy, and that was being mentioned with the One energy that we have, and then um, the Empress energy utilizing all those tools, but you having that from within, that also being a part of the Ten and that Wheel of Fortune energy too. So Mother energy may have Gemini energy, and you have strong Gemini energy too. And that being a part of that mother-daughter energy, but also the connection of love and the commonality that is shared with the experienced, more seasoned <laughs> energy here that is providing lesson without really speaking, just being more of an example and allowing the daughter energy to alchemize and to know how to really go within, find that inner working of what they've already started as a magician, as a high priestess, moving towards that empress energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
So I do feel that this may be um, also connected to the union and the love that is shared between um, a connection between a mother and daughter that may have also been at a misfortune. So anything that's being experienced and the other things and people that are around it being connected to what is taking place as a part of misfortune, there being clarity to bring that stuff down so that as one is moving forward, utilizing the best of their energy to build up on new foundation, realizing the star power as the antidote and moving into the moon energy and that just being perfect alignment here for this reading as I speak on that. Because after the moon, we have the sun and that being about a rebirth energy. Coming from a major death process, um, I do feel that with your Afukas energy, you may go through a lot more death experiences um, as far as dying to an old way of being and there being even more clarity. Just when you thought, you know, you couldn't be more clear, something else, um, you know, comes around for you to help you to have the opportunity to gain greater. I feel it's about that perspective energy, too. And that three being connected to the hangman energy and that hangman being 12 and the energy of having and gaining greater perspective to see the bigger picture. And that was kind of the message that was coming through for the Scorpio moon reading too. But really getting to the heart of things, the matter of things, so that, um, you know, any kind of cycles that may have seemed like they were continuing the nitty gritty all surfacing, all the connection to what has taken place as a part of misfortune so that it can all be healed and deal, uh, dealt with. <clears throat> Excuse me. My throat chakra is activating here too as well. So I just feel there's been, again, it's that unsaid energy where there's a lot unsaid, but there are things that are being expressed just in certain ways, a very Gemini magician way. And this is all a part of helping one to uh, glow and grow and to do even better than they did before. Rebirth energy all the way through. That rebirth connected to also a lot of great happiness with the sun card being a very happy card in the deck. You did have the ten of cups there too. So I do feel that's also reassurance for you to know, again, that all is well. What goes up? <clears throat> does not have to come down, but what comes down can always go up. That may be the title. That was pretty smooth. All right, let's get to your final card and the moon card. For a Fucus moon. We have two cards here. The one I was looking at with this was this one underneath, so I'm gonna take that one. Time to take breathe out. And I don't think they worded this right, but it's okay. We know what it means. And this is disseminating moon energy, which we have recently gone through. Um, coming from, <clears throat> excuse me, new moon energy. Now we're coming into more of a full moon energy. So I just feel that speaks to your uniqueness and your rarity and your specialness that's taking place for you because great things are happening in your life where there's greater abundance on the way here. I'm also, as I say that, uh, seeing this as a shiny pinnacle here and an ace of pinnacle and a new start and new beginning. There's been some special moon cards that have been coming out too. Take time to breathe out. Okay, yeah, that was right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Disseminating moon. The intensity of the full moon has abated. And we have yet, we're coming upon this full moon here. The intensity of the full moon has abated. So I, I do feel like this is like um, preparation, more assistive, supportive guidance for you as we um, come into this full moon and then it disseminates after that. And the full moon is in Taurus will be in Taurus. All right, let me start over. The intensity of the full moon has abated and what are we left with? That's what this card is asking you. 
that suggests that the situation you're asking about has now peaked and it's time for you to regroup and learn from your experiences rather than blindly forging ahead. This is totally the message here. And with that reversal, I'm also noticing the blindfold here where I'm getting the message of no blindfold when making a choice as well. And that being a part of the devil energy there too. Have faith that what is happening is for the best. Try to accept the way things are now and give yourself and others time out to relax, breathe. We can't be on all the time. If you feel you've hit an obstacle or even failed in some way, now is the time to reflect on how to do things differently next time. Be honest with yourself. If you feel bad about your current situation and then remind yourself that life goes in cycles. Attune to the moon by affirming, I am where I am and it's okay. All is well. Additional meanings for this card. You should know where you stand either now or very soon. You need to take some time out for your own good. It's time for you to share your wisdom and experience with someone else. Avoid falling into a slump. You got this. The teaching. The disseminating moon is the first moon phase after the explosion of energy that comes with the full moon. No matter when you pick this card, it suggests you're at a more tranquil point in your life cycle of whatever situation you're asking about. This is not the ideal time to start something new. The disseminating moon is the time to breathe out. Give yourself some time off and think about what has passed. So what I'm getting here too is that, you know, it doesn't have to be for a prolonged period of time where a lot of you may be on, you know, with that fire energy and the Knight of Wands on going, 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 going. Things coming about for a provided time for you to take respite. And that also being a time for you to strengthen and to, again, gain, gain that greater clarity coming from that Seven of Cups there. This That whole message just applying to everything that was coming through for this reading. I love how this works. I love how divine works, and it's just beautiful. Uh, thank you, Spirit. So we'll end it there. A few kiss moons. This was your reading. Ho, ho, ho. I hope that these messages were helpful, enlightening, empowering, and enriching for you. I'm so mad at myself that I tried to really change that. <laughs> Thank you all for your continued love and support. Welcome to all new subscribers. And until we meet again, I wish you all the very best. Take great care. I love you. Peace.